Hitler. Um, interesting fact for you, if you don't know this, every day in the United States of America, every single day, 10,000 people turn 65 years old. And that will, it will continue. Come on in, have a seat. Unfortunately, you have to sit up front. Um, it will continue for the next 19 years that every day 10,000 Americans are turning 65. And it's creating a whole new world for business. It's creating a whole new world for various industries that are joining and sprouting up from hospitality, uh, health care, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, I try to look at the positives in life. It's not a negative every day that 10,000 people are turning 65. It's an opportunity if you're open to it. And if, you're, if you can think out of the box and look at some of the industries that are popping up, which I'll share with you in a little while. I'm going to go through something for about a half hour. If you have a question, ask it. If you want to hold it till the end, I'll stay as long as you want for questions and answers. Fair enough? Okay. First of all, over 50 is not a death sentence. It is an asset. And I, and I heard Lynn Doyle speaking downstairs. I can tell you firsthand for the placements that I make. Um, no offense to young Jim here who's filming me, who's a recent college grad, but his generation, of which I have three children that age, um, and I'm the men's soccer coach at Gwena Mercy College. <clears throat> so I'm around a lot of young men all the time. Scares the heck out of me, come on in, that they are going to pay my social security. There is not, and I, and I don't mean to uh, uh, position the whole generation this way, but those of you who have children, they, they march to a different drummer. But I don't want to sound like I'm my father, but they have a whole different way of looking at work, and corporate America knows this. If you read Time Magazine, last month, the, the front page was about a topic that I speak about a lot. There's four generations now working in the workplace. There's 22-year-olds, there's 32-year-olds, there's 45-year-olds, and there's 60-year-olds. And every generation, help yourself, this is the first one here. Every generation has a different way of looking at work, different values, okay? The younger generation, it's Wednesday, what are they thinking? What time can I leave Friday to go to Wildwood, okay? And Sunday night, when we're getting ready, watching 60 Minutes, we're reading whatever paper you read, you're getting your clothes out for work, you're figuring out what time I'm leaving, they're trying to figure out, can I have one more beer and see aisle, what time do I gotta get home tonight because I have to go to work tomorrow. And that's a true story. Your major corporations are now sending their managers out and they're studying how do I manage a 23-year-old who sits next to a 45-year-old who sits next to a 60-year-old? One was born with computers in their mouth, one has learned computers, one hates computers. How do I make them a cohesive group? And it's a real challenge in corporate America. But one of the things that you bring to the table, our generation, is a work ethic. Um, historically, at our age, we're not running out Friday afternoon at three o'clock, we'd like to leave sometime early, but we'll stay till five or six to get the job done. We're in early on Monday morning. We're not concerned about, i give you an example. I had a young lady come to see me a couple of weeks ago. It was a friend of mine asked me if I would interview his daughter, just graduated from college. So she came in, we were talking for about 15 minutes about this job that I had that I didn't think the client would introduce um, an entry level person to, but I decided, let me, let me talk to her. So after about five minutes, I said, time out, let me give you a valuable lesson. I want you to leave my office, I want you to get out in your car, I want you to drive around a block, I want you to come back, and I want you to walk in like you're walking in for the first time. And she looked at me like I was crazy. And I said, because if you stay here, I'm not passing you through to the company, because in six minutes, so far, you've asked me how many days off, how many vacation days, how many personal days? What are the work hours? Can I work from home? Do they give me a laptop and a cell phone? You haven't asked one question about the company, the type of work they do, the position title. All you've asked me is how infrequently can I show up and get paid? And that, that's how it hit me. So I, I said, I cannot send you to my client. And she did it because her father called me the next day and he said, I don't know what the hell you did to her, but I told him the story and I said, hopefully she'll learn a valuable lesson because all she wanted to know was me, 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 me. And, and you know, we're, we're in an economy right now. Companies are just coming out of this recession. And we are coming out of the recession. I'm going to give you some stats 
we are coming out of the recession. My particular company in May was our second best month in 29 and a half years. Okay? That might not mean a lot to you, to my peers in my industry, it means a heck of a lot. It's a huge sign that there's starting to be breaks out there. And I have a number of friends who also own recruiting firms, and we had a meeting last evening, and eight out of nine firms were also reporting their best quarter in over five years. These are tremendous signs that will start to trickle down. So I don't care what you read in the paper, I don't care what you see in the news, we're on the front line. We know a corporate America is starting to open up. And the, the reason is, number one, times are a little bit better. People are sick and tired of being sick and tired. And also, the ones who are still working are tired. You know, I, I have managers who had to lay off four and five people on their staff, and they're working until eight or nine every night because they, they want to protect their job, but they don't have the staff to do it, and they're exhausted. And I read a great article in yesterday's uh, Wall Street Journal, which is what I've been taught for the 30 years I've been in this business. Another couple months of things being good, and a lot of key managers are looking to leave. They're getting their resumes done, they're sprucing up their LinkedIn page, and corporate America knows that. Because one of the topics that I talk about a lot is, if you remember it in the older days, uh, when I was looking for a job right out of college, my father said, well, you got to go here and you got to go to personnel office, okay? I haven't heard that terminology in 20 years because personnel became human resources. Anybody know where human resources came from? Anybody know that quick story? About 15, 20 years ago, when the U.S. were get, we were getting our butts kicked by China and Japan and the Pacific Rim in terms of manufacturing. And a, a Harvard MBA did a study, and what he came up with is, in America, if you look at a balance sheet of a corporation, salaries and benefits were under expenses. In Japan, it was under investment. Okay? Yes. Little change, but it, all was how it was perceived. And then the, the Harvard MBA wrote, wrote a couple of position papers that, hey, we better get on the good foot here. Maybe one of the reasons we're getting our butts kicked is because how we perceive people. So somebody came up with the term, well, we won't use personnel anymore, we'll use human resources. So for the longest time, it's been HR. 